and welcome to worship. I'm doing things a little bit different in the summer. I didn't actually make slides this, um, this week. Um, it's been a busy week, kind of. Actually, you can tell by my sunburn, I've been in the water a lot in the pool in town, so that was nice, and then had company. Um, so welcome to those of you here today, and welcome to those who are gonna be viewing this later online. It's good to be able to enjoy the summer and uh, to have that option to see from afar, even if we can't make it in. I'm trying something a little bit different away from the lectionary. Um, at Prairie Presbyterian Church, they are doing a worship series that they've offered to other people. And it's um, about creation and, and being still and behold is what they call it, Matthew. He was, his first call was here many years ago, I guess, 20 years ago. And uh, so Matthew opened it up to other people to use. And I just always like a series or some different directions. So I'm adapting it for use here. Um, and uh, other churches, we are in a minister, in a minister shortage. And, and the, I've told you about that in the fall, there'd be like two and a half ministers. Um, for this whole presbytery. And uh, so they're using this also up in Thompson, and they're using the whole thing, we're not. And I, they might be using it in other churches or people are doing it as a devotional. So I will send it to you, Lorene, and then people can hear Matthew's take. You're not gonna hear Matthew's sermon, but people can follow along as well and compare. And it's kind of like how we are connected as Presbyterians and and you see how different churches do things. And we're connected by technology and by the Holy Spirit. So um, so we're gonna just, the first six minutes, this is like a whole 30 minute video. We're just gonna watch the first six minutes, which is gonna be our call to worship and centering. So um, if you can play that, thanks Brayden. And you can stay seated at this. We're doing something different for this summer over 10 weeks. We are going to be doing a series called Be Still and Behold. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the series a bit later. For now, you can just engage in this time of liturgy and worship and some music. Uh, and I hope that this is a blessing for you uh, as you join in worship today. We acknowledge that we are gathered on Treaty One land, first entrusted by Creator God to the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, the homeland of the River Métis. <laughs> Well, 
stop there. So yeah, just a little bit different opening. So let us come before God and worship and singing our opening hymn is Morning Has Broken, number 814 in your hymn book. Fourteen. So each week we come together in our prayers and we have prayers of adoration and confession. And we confess that we are not perfect people, that we have not lived up to God's will for us. And we take time now as individuals and as collectively as a church to acknowledge our sins, our wrongs, and our shortcomings, and to be sure of the new life in Christ. So whether you are in a, here with us today or whether you are afar and uh, worshiping online, um, I invite you to, to pray and with me. Creator God, you formed us from the dust. You breathed your life into us. And you walk with us as we journey. As we come before you today, we confess that we have not always followed you. Through our lips, we may say that we want to, you to walk among us, but our hearts and actions often do not follow. We confess that we want to create, carve our own paths, and we think we know what is best, and that we are more willing to listen to the voice of others than to yours. We confess at times we deliberately do things we know are wrong. We choose with full understanding to make decisions that are not in line with your will for our lives. Today we begin to refocus our, on your presence. We confess that we often are not mindful of your presence. And as we move through the, this summer, we ask that you help us to find your presence in the many ways that you show it to us. Amen. Friends, hear the good news that God who created Adam and Eve, who strolled with them in the garden, who clothed them that they would feel no shame, continues to walk beside us today. Though Adam and Eve committed that first sin God did not abandon humanity, but continues to interact with his children in every way imaginable and in ways that we do not know. To know that today you are forgiven and the God of all creation has called you by name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. 
and I offer you to greet your neighbors and say, peace, be with you. Peace, Chelsea, peace. <laughs> peace, greet each smile with your eyes. Is there a bit of an echo or is it just me? Is this, this mic isn't on, is it? No, okay. Our next hymn, and I'm picking kind of hymns of creation, are, is God of the Sparrow. Are you familiar with this one? God of the sparrow, God of the dawn. <laughs> so Chelsea's gonna just start with the opening introduction and then we'll start singing. 307, just a minute, I have to get to it because last time I was like, had the hymn halfway through. Okay. Loving God, we give you thanks for the story of creation. And we give you thanks that you created us and created all that is around us. Help us to hear today and to strive to live in your grace and, and to our full potential. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the first is... Um, the first reading is from Genesis, chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, and then a few other selected verses. And this is the story of creation in the Garden of Eden. Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into the nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being, and the Lord planted a garden in Eden and in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord made grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight of the good and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord took the man and gave him the garden of Eden to till and to keep. And the Lord God commanded this, the man, you may freely eat out of every tree of the garden, but out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to, that he should be alone. 
I will make a helper, his partner. So out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of field and every kind of air and brought them to the man so he would what, to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. The man gave names to the cattle and the birds of the air and every animal of the field. But for the man, no, that none was found as a helper. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to, sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed it in its place with flesh. And from that rib, the Lord God, taken from the man, he made into a woman. Now the serpent was a crafty, was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat of any tree, you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said you shall not eat the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave the fruit to her husband who was with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. And they heard the sound of Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man said to his wife, and the man and the wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and asked him, where are you? So we have the creation and then the eating of the tree of life. So in my early ministry years, I actually would have avoided, I know it sounds strange, that I, but I would have avoided this passage of Adam and Eve in the garden and then Eve eating from the tree um, because I just find it really disturbing that Eve gets all the blame over history. So I kind of I've really avoided it. But so much so that actually it's kind of shaped me this passage because I've had to struggle with it. Um, so I used this passage at my brother's wedding. They got married. I think they'd been married for 22 years. Yeah, they got married in 2000, Cameron, my younger brother. And so I read this passage about man and, and woman being formed. And I said to his bride, Cam, to Charlene, I said, Charlene, if Cameron gets cranky with you, and he will, I'm sure, you say to him, I'm the rib, you're the dirt, not the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was a seminary student in, at Pre in Presbyterian College in Montreal, and my dad, and with all good intentions, he sent me a, a, a tape. That's how long ago it was, right? He sent me a tape. And it was by the, the Statler brothers. And it was called the Holy Bible. The Holy Bible according to the Statler brothers. He thought he was encouraging me that he had found this tape somewhere. And it was this country music. And his daughter was studying to be a minister. But I read that the first song, because it was going in the order of the Bible, was called Eve. And this is the, this is the words. It says, don't eat the fruit of the garden, Eve. It wasn't in God's plan. 
You were only a rib, and look what you did to Adam, the father of man. <laughs> well, I ripped the tape out of the tape recorder right there. <laughs> You were only a rib, and look what you did. That doesn't even rhyme. But instead of disempowering me as a, a young female studying for ministry, it really, it really made me look for ways to redeem that story and ways to understand that story and to ways that God has called all people in ministry and, and women and how that is shared When Eve takes the apples, yes, the world did change. So I'm going to try and unpack Eve. So that was, Eve represents the women and girls, and women and girls who hear this story, you know, you have to think, well, how do people, how do girls hear that story? And how do boys hear that story? I mean, I, I mean we haven't been in Sunday school for a while. But do young boys think, oh, well, at least it wasn't the boy's fault. It was the girl's. There was another Korean student who told me, he said, you know, the snake whispered to Eve because Eve is the more influential one in the partnership. Eve, the women are the one who kind of do the household. So knew that could maybe trick Adam a bit easier. Don't know. I think it also was just the culture of the time. But that, you know, the idiom of forbidden fruit, that's kind of been always since that, that scripture reading that people kind of look at things that are bad as forbidden fruit. And most of the people of Abraham, Abraham Abrahamic faith, they have this story. So Christians, Jewish, and Muslims all have this story of Adam and Eve in the garden. And the fact that Adam and Eve disobeyed God and were banished, and that that would be hard work. But it's only the Western Christianity who sees it as, as this big um, they call it, we, call, we sometimes call it the fall or the original sin. In, it's not looked at that way in, in Jewish culture. It's not looked at that way in Muslim culture. It is just a story of origin that we as human beings right from the start went off course and didn't trust God and we did things differently. And it all comes from, so this is, the, it all comes from this man called St. Augustine, or Augustine of Hippo, in 392. And he's the one who's created this doctrine of the original sin. And in the Eastern Church, because he didn't speak Greek, because the Eastern Church was based in Greeks, and they had this as, yeah, we make a mistake, but God is good. They don't, they don't keep on going with that mistake. The Eastern theologians, theologians did not teach the fall that had completely corrupted humanity and destroyed humans' freedom to turn to God and receive the Holy Spirit. Through the gift of the Spirit, human beings were still called to become like God and God were made in the image of God and partakers in creation. So there's a difference between Eastern and Western church in the 300s. And then that continues with the reformers. And so the reformers, they, in the 1500s, I'm giving you a little church history, they kept that notion. And you know, Calvin and Luther, they were men and they were very stern, very stern men and wanted, we have that Protestant work ethic, right? It's duty and you know, you make sure that you are right in everything. Well, there's a woman from Princeton, she was part of my thesis for art therapy because I looked at this, how this story affected women. 
And there's a woman from Princeton, her name is Danielle Schroyer. And she says that we've got that backwards. Instead of looking at the original sin as defining all of humanity, we should look at the Garden of Eden as the original blessing that we are so blessed that God made everything and made, you know, that we could be a part of creation and work with God and that God blesses us with life and all that we really do need in life when things are in balance. So she says that really we've emphasized or emphasis we have the wrong emphasis if we were going to say syllables. We emphasize the wrong part of the story. And she also quoted, and that it's, she said that it's all, all Western denominations have done this. Catholics say, this is her quote from her book, a favorite quote from this book. Catholics say we have lost our original holiness and justice. Methodists say, we are inclined to evil continually. And the Westminster Catechism, used by Presbyterians and Reformed traditions, say, we were made opposite unto all that is spiritually good and wholly inclined to all evil. And that is, and that continually. You know, I, I always have a bit of, like, yeah, I know that we, so to think that our heart's desires are only evil. It's hard, like, we do make up, we make messes, but I think that we also, we, God is gracious and will forgive us. Now, sorry, my Lutheran friends, the, be, the best goes to the Lutherans. Remember Martin Luther? So it says, in the Lutheran, Lutheran Book of Concord, which only states, uh, the original sin is the absence of all good, but also the original sin gives us a deep, wicked, horrible, fathomless, inscrutable, and unspeakable corruption of the entire nature and all of its powers. So Luther may, you know, in that religion, and that might be what made people want to you can all think, oh, I've got to get everything right with God, right from the beginning. And that's, you know, we, we do need to be right with God, but we don't need to make ourselves and others feel bad about it. God's creation is, was in love and goodness. That's the original blessing in the garden. And in summer, especially here in Canada, we can enjoy those original blessings. And that we also have to look at some of that blame and guilt and shame. And that's in the story too. That, and as a counselor, that's what I see a lot of. I see blame. Somebody has to be blamed. And then there's, or somebody has to feel, or somebody will feel guilty or there's shame. Benet Brown, she, if you look her up on, on the internet and in already TED Talks or, or any, um, yeah, on, on, in, on YouTube, she's a Catholic and she's a, a sociologist. And she says there's a difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is I have done something bad. And so, or, and shame is I am bad. Like, I'm a bad person altogether. So Adam and Eve in the garden, they had some shame that they, but God still called out, where are you? They had done something bad. They had guilt. And they had shame that they felt like they were naked. But really, God's like, I just want to talk with you. I just want to be with you. I just want to walk and visit and get to know you. That's the God that we have. And we shouldn't let our shame 
block us from coming to God. We shouldn't let our shame that get in the way of having a relationship with God and creation. So I actually spend a lot of time with indigenous friends and culture. And when you think of us bringing our faith over here, it's really very different. They, when we, as people came over and we, and the missionaries and said, you guys are all bad and we have to, we have to make you all right. But that they were, theirs was creation is good and we're here to take care of it and be part of it and be connected to creation. And when we, when creation suffers, we suffer. When we hurt God and God's creation, we suffer. So there's a difference and there's a guilt, but God can, doesn't want us to go around walking with shame. God wants us to be whole and in relationship. So again, I said, as we are blessed to live in Canada and enjoy this beautiful land. So this summer, take time to enjoy. And now each week I'm gonna give you a little creative um, practice suggestion. I'm not, I'm not expecting you all to paint beautiful pictures or do drawings or things like that. <laughs> but take some time and be still and know that, you, that God is there. Take some time and just with your coffee out on the deck and listen to God. And this, you can feel God with all your senses, the, with, the, with the breeze on you, with the birds singing or the noises around. One of my favorite summer noises, I know this is strange, is grass cutting mowing. I just think I feel like it's a happy neighborhood when I hear all the grass cutting. I don't know why. And and smell. Smell. And and there's going to be days when maybe things don't smell so well like if the manure is being spread nearby or something. Or and take pictures in your mind's eye. Or with your phone. Just like Look at this beautiful butterfly, this beautiful spider's web. But in doing that, we also may see that creation is disturbed by us or endangered by us as humans. And the garden that God gave us is also in trouble as just as much as we are. May God bless you as you enjoy, enjoy the recreation of this summer. Amen. So let us pray. Creator God, we live in a changing world whether which once was cyclical and consistent has become a mystery. The rainy season sometimes does not come or it lasts for a long time. The growing season shrinks, plants drown and plants wither. Around the world, farmers look at their fields and weep as families near and far depend on crops which do not come, but live on a world, we live in a world and we long for the lushness of, of Eden, but we live in a world of extremes. We ask, O oh God, that you be with those who are struggling in this time of climate change. Be with those who struggle to grow enough food to feed their families. Be with those who rely on cash crops to support themselves. 
and comfort those who mourn as they watch their hard work being destroyed. As we move into the warmest part of our year in the Northern Hemisphere, be with those who struggle with heat. We remember those who are of, do not have security of homes. As the unrelenting sun shines down, help us to find moments of cool and be with those who do not have air conditioning. Help them find a place of coolness and relief. As lightning strikes and fire burns, be with those who are displaced from their home and those who are fighting fires. As waters churn and thunderstorms roar and winds blow, be with those who are in paths of destruction and keep them safe. And as each of us ponders our place in this changing world, help us to become change makers, making a difference in both small ways and large, that we can advocate for just, justice and the protection of God's earth. And we pray for this church of Knox Presbyterian that you be with us this summer as we welcome visitors and as we share with one another and as well as we look at our own family lives and travels and challenges that we may face. We offer you now the prayers of our hearts. And together we pray the words that were given to us by Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And deliver us from evil. <laughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And you know what? Chelsea and I have the same favorite hymn. Blessed Assurance, good old Fanny Crosby. My, do you know Fat, the story about Fanny Crosby? She's the writer of this hymn. And she was blind. And she heard this tune, or she played it, and then she said, that sounds like blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. So I just, she has, and she writes some good hymns. I think, I can't remember what other one she wrote. But this, yes. Hmm? She wrote six or seven hymns a day. Wow. Whew. So the number is 687. 687. 687. Just let people turn to get to their pages because uh, I know you're eager to play, but we need to get to our spots. So, 687. Please stand.
Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, now and